Now, the way to tackle those, those um, issues will be in the next election that's coming up this year. How do you think your party will fare? We believe that the ground is shifting in South Africa. This time last year when Ahang was preparing to launch as a platform, we didn't have the shifted terrain that we currently are in right now. First of all, the ANC has lost its major assets. It used to rely on the icon Mandela. The icon Mandela is a global icon. He's now gone to his ancestors. They have to perform. Second, they used to rely on the might of the trade unions and the biggest of them, NUMSA, has publicly declared that he's not going to support them. We also have a weakened National Union of Mine Workers and we have strife within the tripartite alliance. That, for us, is a big opportunity. Add to that, in 2009, 41% of South Africans did not vote because they couldn't come bring themselves to vote for what they regarded as a corrupt ANC. They couldn't bring themselves to vote for the DA. So Ahang is occupying the space of a fresh start. We don't have any of the baggage of the past. We are seen as an inclusive home for everybody. Black, white, men, women, young and old. And our targets are women. Women are the bearers of the biggest burden of our failed education system, our failing economy, and the violence and abuse in our society. They want to and they are joining Ahang in large numbers through our women's fora and our field operations. Young people. They are the majority population. We are getting more and more young people joining us. And these are the 100,000 active volunteers and members of Ahang right now. And we are counting. Every day, we've got hundreds joining. They are looking for a future they can be proud of, they can be included in, and a future that they can shape. So Ahang is looking to perform at a level that gives us the role of a catalyst. We are looking at anything between 10 and 15%. It could be more, because as I say, the ground is shifting. But with that performance, we will be a strong voice that will catalyze realignment of the political space. We want to work with other opposition parties to bring the ANC below 50%. This is an important agenda that every voting citizen must bear in mind. We have an ANC that has become so arrogant that they are undermining the very basic, very basis of democracy. For a president to say that the ANC will rule, as he calls it, rule forever, means he has no respect for the fact that this ANC, particularly his office and his person, is implicated in huge corruption. He thinks that people should not even consider that because he is the king. He is regarding himself not as a public servant, but as a king. And South Africans must thwart that agenda that he's got. Second, he is threatening to change the constitution should the ANC get two-thirds majority. South Africans should not take that as an empty threat. We've heard it being said in Zimbabwe, it happened. We need to wake up as South African citizens and say a vote for opposition parties of our choice is the best way of asserting our voice so that we can have multi-party democracy that is clean, that leads to a clean and a, a government that will answer to the people. A government that will have able people being able to serve us. 
After all, the government is using your money to perform at this very low level in terms of education. Your money to support a health system that's failing women and children every day. A, to support a law and order system where we know that many police take bribes. It is corrupt, it's riddled with corrupt because there is no accountability. It's in our hands. We as voters this year have a choice to change the direction of this country by exercising our vote for the future and not voting for the past. Now, in your autobiography, A Passion for Freedom, you speak about toying with the idea of potentially joining the DA before you decided that wasn't for you, you needed to form something new. Can you talk to us about that thought process? It wasn't toying with the idea. We had serious discussions because we believe that a realignment of the opposition parties will strengthen the voice of citizens and give South Africans a real taste of multi-party democracy. It didn't happen because of a disagreement about how you address the fact that for better or for worse, the majority of black people still regard the DA as a white party, still feel uneasy, which is why Mr. Ramaphosa, who is one of the architects of our beloved constitution, uses race to divide, saying to voters in Sashiro, if you don't vote for us, the Bure will come back and take South Africa. It's a very irresponsible statement, but it plays to that discomfort that still exists. The fact that 13 million people in 2009 who didn't want to vote for the ANC did not vote for the DA tells you that we need to do a lot more than just simple rebranding. We need to project a transformed political alternative that South Africans would like to associate with. We continue to talk to the DA because we are not against the Democratic Alliance. What we would like to do is to create this fresh platform where, that peop where people, where citizens, where voters will have no excuse to say this is what we would like to be associated with. And I believe that this year is going to see very interesting uh, shifts in the political space. We agree with the diagnosis that we need not just political freedom, but economic freedom. The best route to economic freedom is making sure that every young person leaves our school system and our training system with real skills. That's the power. And we know from analysis that education and training with the skills is what makes the difference between those people who are earning above 10,000 and those who are earning below. Those without a metric have very little chance of getting um, employment, and those with a poor metric have no chance of getting employment either. So we believe that economic freedom starts first and foremost with making sure every child gets the education they deserve, and we give second chances to young people who have missed out with on-the-job training using the sectoral education and training authority money. Do you know that your money, five to six billion rand every year, goes into those big bureaucrat bureaucratic institutions that are not producing the artisans, the skills that we need. Ahang believes that the quickest way of dealing with the problem we have is simply to shift that money post the 2014 elections into on-the-job training. We partner with the private sector. 
we partner with employers, and we remove this middle layer called the CETAs so that young people can regain their dignity, the dignity of work, the dignity of being able to be really competent as a skilled person, as an entrepreneur. And then we want to couple that with promoting small and medium enterprises. Cut out the bureaucracy, cut the red tape, provide support for entrepreneurs and remove the anti-competitive behavior through a strong competition commission so that new entrants into various sectors can function in a way that makes them proud. We have to grow this economy. We must get South Africa working. And the only way we can create new jobs, new opportunities, is through small and medium enterprises. We have a plan. All we need is for South Africans to support us, to give us that ability to be part of a coalition government in different provinces, part of a real say in parliament. That's what we need to change.